Hi, and welcome back to Ghosties. I'm Macy. And I'm Natalie. Today, we have an episode about ghost towns, Woo-hoo! specifically in southeastern Ohio. One Ooh. ghost town. Okay. We'll be discussing the Moonville Tunnel and several other hauntings in the area on the old rail trail. Ooh. What used to be a small mining town now lays abandoned. The train no longer passing through and the land taken into the care of the Zaleski State Forest. I've mentioned it before, um, but for some reason, trains really freak me out. <laughs> just trains in general in general nothing just, haunted just the train the mystique of the train just <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i don't know but i was basically sweating the entire time i was doing research yeah. like my hands are sweating now just because the mention of a railroad i don't know such a strange phobia i i truly think maybe there's some kind of you did some past life relation has there because i don't know it's a weird one because you've never had like a traumatic <laughs> no experience ever there's this one time i was i don't have it on my snapchat memories it came up like it was like eight years ago and it's a video of us stopped at the train tracks and kayla's in the back seat i'm in the front and then mom's there a train goes by with just two cars and for some reason mom thought that was so funny she's like <laughs> look at the short train and she was like laughing till she cried she's so weird <laughs> i have a video of her because me and kayla were like okay and just like her laughing so hard and then she was laughing because we were like you know it was just one of those moments it was so funny and she like had tears she's like it was a short (laughs) train that's like one of my favorite memories of trains i don't have any bad ones except when i see them i think of you i get panicked every time i think of a train i know but this area specifically is full of wandering spirits um spirits seen since the 1800s when the town was still occupied and the railroad still traversed daily i'm intrigued our tea today is another bigelow tea it's english tea time let's go It is robust. <laughs> That's what it said on the packet. <laughs> and they were right. It is it is a robust tea. It's good. I put like, I don't know, like 30 <laughs> teaspoons of sugar in this. So um, it kind of has a honey consistency. <laughs> nice. I'm just kidding. It's, it's not like that bad. Giving me flashbacks to serving. Oh. Just the sh- more. <laughs> more more sugar when you have you had someone tell you like and they're like and bring me a lot of sugar and when you think it's too much more yes and there have been times where i would go back and i'd put my hand in that sugar thing and i would grab all the packets i could and i bring them they're like i'm gonna need more than that i i brought first of all they use all of the packets of sugar on the table i brought them another large handful thinking i can just put the rest like refill it or something like we're gonna need more than that sweetie i brought them a canister of sugar (laughs) and they used all but like a pinch you know that tiktok sound you need to leave yes yes i stood there (laughs) thinking like i I just i like take it back because we used it for stuff in the back like fill stuff yeah no i was just standing there watching her and i just got more and more uncomfortable as the time went on just it's like the men in black aliens with sugar water yes (laughs) yes yeah anyway that's what your tea is now. Yeah. Okay. It's not that bad. I think I put like three teaspoons, but still a lot for this tiny, cute little ghosties mug. I don't know if y'all are seeing this, but um, mm-hmm. our giveaway winner will win that soon. Yes. We haven't announced the winner yet, but. Oh yeah. Make sure you go and enter because it's still open. Yep. When this goes out. The giveaway is still open on Instagram. So go look at it at ghosties pod. If you want a cute little mug like this and a sticker like this on okay. Macy's laptop. We thought it was pretty cute. We ordered it for ourselves and for <laughs> our giveaway uh, winner. So yes, <laughs> it's really like a one-time. Very limited one-time giveaway. Per usual, we'll start with the story. It was late one summer night in 1979 when six teenage boys decided to head back to their car after a night of hanging out at a place they called the Water Hole. <laughs> Drinking some beers, they snuck. A night of teenage revelry, really. Ooh. It was near 10 p.m. now, and they were trying to make it back home before their parents became worried as they approached the Moonville Tunnel. There had been rumors about this place for as long as they could remember of strange occurrences and haunting specters. This, they thought, was just a story told to younger generations to give them a good scare. They stopped at the edge of the tunnel to listen to make sure they couldn't hear the sound of an engine heading their way, then began the short walk through the dark tunnel along the train tracks. There was a slight tension between the boys and nervous laughter, none of them wanting to admit they were all a little spooked. They were now halfway through to the other side when one spoke up saying, Watch out for the ghost of the old conductor. A couple of them chuckled, but when the youngest of the boys looked over his shoulder, 
he could just make out the image of a small light coming from the side of the tunnel where they had just come from. He gasped and all of the boys turned to see what he had seen. Immediately thinking someone living nearby had called the police on them for they had been making a good bit of noise. Two of the boys made the decision to walk back and talk to the sheriff to allow the rest of the boys time to dump the remainder of their drinks and make it back to the car. The group of four hastened their steps to get through to the other side when suddenly the two tasked with speaking to the police dart past them at a full sprint. So they all picked up the pace and raced back to their car. Breathing heavily, they all jumped into the car anxiously and asked, Who was it? Why were you running? Still catching their breath, one of them finally spoke up. We got back to the entrance of the tunnel and could still see the light, but... But I'm telling you, nobody was there. No one was holding that light. <gasps> the four laughed, but there was a look of seriousness on his face. The driver, who had not been drinking, and another of the group decided to go back to prove them to prove to them that they had just been seeing things. There had to be someone out there. They all saw the light swinging back and forth. They made it back to the tunnel, and sure enough, there was the light still swaying as if flagging them down. They hesitated, but slowly made their way toward the light, calling out to see who was on the other side. That's when they realized that as they got closer, the light was glowing, but it wasn't casting any real light through the darkness. They were 20 yards away now, and were just able to make out the outline of an old oil lantern, but there was not a hand holding it just a floating light. The light suddenly stopped swaying and was completely stationary. Oh, no. The two boys got out of there as fast as they could and made their way back home, the car silent the rest of the way. <laughs> they had to pass by the tunnel one last time on their drive out of the woods, and sure enough, there was the same light in the same spot, swinging back and forth once again. Why? We'll get there. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, we'll get there. Oh, I didn't know there was, like, lore about the one guy. Interesting. Is, is it an angry sway, or is it just kind of like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's a, just kind of like like um hanging out like to get attention kind of sway mm -hmm. like because like, oh. it's a train tunnel so oh like, so like, like stop. flagging someone down yeah interesting but we'll get there but they didn't see the person they did not not this time mm. in the early 1850s a man named william cutler was attempting to create a route by railroad across southeastern ohio straight through to cincinnati he was looking for a way to cut costs with the marietta and cincinnati railroad when he found several families who had recently moved into the heavily wooded section of appalachia to open up mines and establish businesses for their families samuel coe along with another family in the area named the fergusons owned a portion of land west of athens and had been looking for a better way to ship the clay and coal and other goods mined on their land rather than using Raccoon Creek, and the opportunity for the use of the railroad was exciting. Huh. They offered to let the Marietta and Cincinnati line build track and run through their properties for free, as long as they would be able to use the trains that pass through to transport all the goods that they were extracting. So a pretty good deal for everybody. Like, yeah. Everyone was in agreement, and so Moonville and the surrounding area was built up in 1858. It is unclear how the town got its name exactly. Some say it was named after the owner and an operator of a nearby store named Mr. Moon. Aww. And I like that lore, so we'll keep it. That's cute. <laughs> I like that. That's, that's, that's how they got their name. The railroad built tracks through the wooded area, bridges over the creeks, and dug what will be our focus today in Moonville, uh, a tunnel through a large hill. The mines were able to operate at a larger capacity now that they had a more efficient way of transporting, and so a small mining town was formed, its population only reaching about 100 people at its peak in 1870. Hmm. The town had the railroad depot, a general store, a schoolhouse, a post office, and a couple of saloons. That's cute. It I was like it. um just a little tiny cute little the town blink in if holes. You miss it. Yes. That's what I envision. That's the the mental picture I'm painting right now. Yeah, kind of. <sighs> just really more wooded, no desert. Great movie. Fantastic movie. <laughs> the community of Moonville, like many rural towns in America, operated alongside the other small towns in the counties of Vinton and Hawking like Hope Mineral King Station, and a little further down the line, Zale uh, Zaleski. It was and is the state's least populated and most heavily forested area. Hmm. The eight-mile stretch of track through and around Moonville was known as the most desolate, isolated area between Parkersburg and St. Louis, and was not favored by railroad workers of the day at all. Like, people dreaded coming through there. Why? Because it was just so dark and nothing. Oh, like what? Like the wooded and stuff? Just completely like wooded, yeah. Oh, that's um, yeah, that's it, eerie. It was heavily wooded and uh, swallowed the sound of the train and made its uh, that when it made its way around hills and over the creek and stuff. Oh, that's scary, dangerous. Working for the railroad, particularly particularly on the trains, was considered a very dangerous job too, um, especially if you were a brakeman. And for some reason, travel along the tracks in Moonville was even more of a problem for pedestrians and railroad work employees alike. Just that area had a, a 
crazy amount of accidents. Well, I can imagine. I don't know. That's the, your worst nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm I'm sweating right now. Oh like, my God. It's freezing in here. And I'm sweating. The air, I turned the air on 65. <laughs> so I, cause I'm wearing this heavy sweater right now. And with the large number of accidents they had, there was also a, a good many fatalities. Well, I yes. Mean, person meets train is usually you know. not train wins. For the people living in and around Moonville, the only easy route to surrounding towns and stores was to travel along the tracks or hitch a ride on one of the passing freight cars. As I mentioned, there were several tunnels and trestles built through hills and over creeks, and this is where the most dangerous part of the route was. The sound of the trains weren't easily heard as they were coming through, and many people were caught inside the tunnel, <gasps> where their only option was to attempt to outrun the un un like incoming engine. That is a horror film. Yes. Or oh caught God. along one of the trestles where you had the option to run, and but also uh, you could jump 50 feet to the shallow creek below. So And I would. And die on impact. <laughs> Ooh, what's Or not worse? die and slowly perish. What's worse? Water. Train or creek? Mm, probably train's more instant. You think? But I'd probably jump, honestly, an instinct. Yeah. Moonville moonshine was another problem for people near the tracks. Um, and in January of 1857, it was reported in the MacArthur Democrat that a man had fallen from the trestle in Moonville and passed while returning home from the grocery store. Though a train was not uh, thought to be blame to blame for the accident, rather his choice to imbibe at the grocery store. There was a mob formed outside the store and they destroyed the store owner's liquor in outrage for him selling so much to their fellow townsperson. Oh, that's kind of sad. Did they still make Moonville moonshine? No, nobody <sighs> lives there today. Oh, I was about to say. It's I a would ghost town. It's abandoned. Oh, okay. Because yeah. I was say, I would, I would buy it for the pod. You'd buy moonshine? <laughs> Oh, yes. Yeah. From Moonville. That'd Moonville Moonshine. That's just cute in general. That would be cool. I would love it. Let's just get a bottle and put a label on it. <laughs> <laughs> there were a great many other deaths reported on the bridges in the area, including a woman passing when she was struck by a passing train in October of 1873, and another woman hit while crossing in January of 1890. It was at this time when people first began to discuss the ghostly activity around the railroad. Enter our woman in white. Oh, AKA the lavender lady. What? You'll see. But yeah, we've got another lady in light. Well, a woman in white. There are many stories of her origins. Some say it was one of these two women hit by the train um, on the trestle. Others say it was a young woman who was hit while on her way to visit her lover. But one thing stays consistent. People have seen a woman in a white dress while crossing the trestle over Raccoon Creek. She doesn't interact with anyone, can just be seen walking down the rail, uh, rail trail toward the tunnel and disappearing before she makes it to the other side. The scent of lavender is often accompanying the spirit blowing through the breeze until it vanishes interesting you know people always make up these stories for like the lady in white the lady in black like oh she was going to meet her lover and her husband and da 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 what if she was just like vibing and they're like putting all these like narratives whenever it's men they're just like oh it's just a man but when it's a woman they're like she was off to see it's her like like whimsical they, yeah they like make a whole story like what if she was just chilling well the two um other ladies who were like confirmed to have uh, passed along this the railroad mm -hmm. were older women so it could have just been some older ladies like, like taking a walk taking a walk or going to the store or something yeah. yeah and they're just like oh she must have because it's more fun if there's some kind of tragic story behind I it i guess. guess but it's always the same story it's the lady in white and she was off to see her husband it's like yeah maybe she was going to like feed the squirrels like she, i like she's that chilling. like i would rather hear that like she From was the squirrel out, lady all women in white are a squirrel lady i read two different quotes of, from people who had read the story of young ernest keaton who lived in moonville many years ago witnessing the ghost of this woman in white he was known to drink a little too much and <laughs> this night was no exception he was heading back towards mineral along the railroad tracks when he noticed he wasn't alone Someone or something was walking alongside the boy in the dark night. He described them as wearing something white and flowy, almost like a sheet. He began to run, but so did the entity. <laughs> it stayed by his side. No. no matter how fast he ran, it kept up with him. It went on for quite a while. Ernest scared out of his mind the entire way. Eventually, he made it to the tunnel when it quickly swept down over the side towards the bank. He continued to run home, not seeing it again that night and not traveling along, alone along those tracks again. Ew, you know how I feel about running. Any type of entity when it picks up speed. I just imagine it not running, it like floating alongside, which yeah. makes it even creepier to me. I think running is scarier, like seeing their feet move fast. Really? If they're floating, it's like, 
ah, oh, scary. But if they're like running and their know. arms are pumping. In my mind, it's like a you see this person beside you and you're like, oh my God, what are they doing? That's terrifying. And then you look down and their feet aren't touching the ground. That, no, that, I don't know. That just got my heart racing a little bit. I'm not going to lie. I don't. I think it's because I'm more afraid of real people yeah. and you're more afraid of like ghostly things. Yeah. And so like like on uh, get out we always talk about jordan peele movies he has like four but <laughs> they're, I all love, they're all good and i love when he does makes he movies. even have four is it three <laughs> i think it might be three but they're all good um kiki palmer love when he um, runs just like he runs yeah. at him <gasps> yeah i don't like it it's so scary strangers comes out next month i think is it a sequel or something it's like number it's like the strangers like origin or something like that strangers is horror. one of the scariest movies i've ever seen in my life horror i think about terrifying that movie. Th the first Why time are you I doing saw this it, because we or because you were home, you were home. Ah! the first time i ever saw that movie i almost cried it's so good and i thought about it literally for six months straight ryan doesn't like get super scared of movies that one when they said like because you were home has stuck with him I, oh, I love it. The psychological element mm -hmm. to all of it is what really scares me. So good. Oh, if they if they mess this up, I'm gonna be so so. Well, sad. there's a second one, isn't there? The strange. Yes, two? with um Bailey it. Madison. Really? Yeah, I haven't seen it. If I'm remembering correctly, it was pretty good. I don't remember exactly though, but I remember the first one. The first one will will haunt me. What about when a stranger calls? I was literally thinking that, but I didn't know if you wanted to carry on the movie conversation. I'm sorry, but when a stranger calls, I watched that for the first time at a sleepover. <sighs> that one at gets me. At my best me. friend's house. That one gets me. It was really scary. It's a good one, because it's so <gasps> on the edge of your seat the whole time. Is that the one where where it's like? The call's coming from inside the house. Yeah, because she's like, called the police and they're like, we'll trace the call, yeah. keep him on the line. And like, ma'am, the call's coming from... <laughs> okay. Also, like, I'm out. Goodbye. I'm you running. the kids. They, she was babysitting. They hid in their little trunk. They were, they ended up being fine. Yeah, so what? You don't leave the kids. I would, I would, I wouldn't be able to. I know, I know. I've seen Hush. I started watching that one and then something happened. I had to turn it off. On Netflix? Or she's, she's, she's deaf. deaf. Yeah. And he's just like skulking around her house. It starts out with her like washing dishes or and making you see food. Him? And you see the woman coming in like banging on the door like, no, yeah, yeah, get yeah. out. She has no idea. And this guy just like brutally takes her out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I saw the beginning. I saw the beginning. It's so good. And like, it's one of those and other ones where she's like, I don't like take money, whatever. And he's just like, no, I, I'm just here to hunt you. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. So scary. Okay. Now I've I'm watched frightened. that like three times. And Netflix, they don't get it right very often, but they got that one right. <laughs> Moving back to, we're going back to Moonville now. Okay. Something a little less scary. <laughs> well, uh, for me. Okay. Yeah. Running. Running's more terrifying to me than floating though. For sure. Just because it's like, I don't know. It's more aggressive. I guess so. When they're like putting pumping, in the effort and yeah. pumping their arms i just i don't know i just picture like the the feet like dragging mm. oh that okay scares me but that reminds me more of like witchiness like on uh hocus pocus yeah you know what i'm talking about when they're yes. like floating i don't know i just i picture like scraped up dirty bare feet you know Ew. i don't know just like something grotesque i don't know that's just in my that's mind that's not what i was thinking but okay oh running barefoot sick <laughs> Okay. There were many other deaths of pedestrians along the tracks, including a few men falling asleep or more so drunkenly passing out, unfortunately, on the tracks and not living to see the next day as trains passed over. How do you mistakenly fall asleep drunk on the tracks? You're just, I don't know, I guess you drink way too much and you're, you're like, oh, I'm tired. I'm going to lay down on this rock. It's still warm from the daytime sun. I guess, but like... I've had a drink or two in my day. I would never. You've never had Moonville moonshine, though. Very true, but I would like to. I would, too. Now, now it sounds I literally so enticing. I drink once every six months, and I'm like, yeah, bring me the moonshine. Same. I'd black out. <laughs> I'd, I'd sniff it and black out. Probably. <laughs> I don't know who I think I am. One such story, though unsubstantiated, was that of a young brakeman who worked for the railroad. He had just gotten paid and had some time off, so he decided to have a drink or two in the saloon near Moonville. As many do, he got a little carried away with the number of drinks, and by the time he decided to walk home, he was good and drunk. It was late at night, with the only available path back home for him was along the tracks, and he decided that he needed a nap and laid his head down to rest unknowingly on the rails. His bottle of whiskey slipped from his fingers, and he fell fast asleep for the last time. That night, there was a train that passed through, and he didn't make it to see daylight. 
The next day, a man that worked in the mines was walking to work when he spotted the bottle near the tracks. He picked it up to inspect it and found blood leading to the bushes nearby. As he stepped toward the bushes, he heard a gruff whisper coming from them, saying the words in reference to the bottle in hand, That's mine. Oh, my God. The miner walked toward the bushes where he found the young brakeman, long dead. And from that day on, many locals claimed to see the brakeman walking along the rails and laying down to sleep. Some even claimed to continue hear- to hear the same voice from the bushes where the body was found, still claiming his bottle of whiskey long after his death. Oh, man. Okay. So the guy saw this blood and was like, someone's got to be hurt. And then he hears the voice that's, that's mine. mine. Yeah. Oh, I don't like that. Thinking he was still alive. No. He was not. Ooh, that's really scary. Ghost. Frightening. Ghost from Death by Train. Even more oh so. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, for you, yes. For me. I don't know. There's just... <laughs> Someone else, please say you're with me. Trains are just scary. <laughs> they scare me only because it has scared you for they so are long. They're just so large and so hard loud. to control. They're so loud. Nothing gets my heart racing in a bad way than hearing a distant train whistle. <laughs> like ominous, like through the fog. Just the other day, Jake and I were driving um, back home. And we live near the train tracks and we heard, uh, like, I, I didn't realize I was like playing Animal Crossing <laughs> I, in the front seat and I heard a train come by and it, it like blew a whistle as soon as it drove by us. And I jumped and literally had to put everything down for a moment because I couldn't feel my fingers. That's like a, a phobia. That's not even a fear. That's a huge problem. Also, you can hear a train if there's like tracks passing through your town at any point like yeah. you could be 20 miles away from the tracks and you hear it still hear it yeah, yeah so how do you live i don't know <laughs> keep music on really okay i try to ignore it and my kids love trains i was about to say they love she say like there's a train coming like way before the train showed up like yes. she knew it was coming yes yes horrifying and i was like no there's not <laughs> No, yes, not. there was. There was. There were several who were hit crossing the tracks, including one man named Charles Ferguson, who in 1912 was hit as he crossed by several freight cars that had broken away from the train that had previously <gasps> passed and made their way back towards him. Ooh, that is terrifying. That's... He like watched the train go by, thought like, I'm good, started crossing, and nope, it came back. It came back for him. Oh, okay, yeah, that's, that's a scary. little. That is really very scary. Maybe this episode was really scary, but it's probably just. Me. People are just listening like, okay, and and you're just like, oh, can you believe this? <laughs> it's like, yes, I can. Then tragically, there were several young men who passed while trying to use the train to get uh, to and from work. They jumped off of the moving cars like they had many times before, but didn't make it back up off the ground. Ugh. So instead of having to get off at the depot and then walk the like couple miles back to their houses, they're like, oh, I'll just ride it to where it passes by my house and leap off. Why? I mean, it worked for them until it didn't. I oh, guess. man. There is a particularly menacing spirit near the Moonville Tunnel, believed to be that of a man killed along the tracks. David Baldy Keaton was, by all accounts, a bully. Baldy? Baldy. He, that was his nickname. Okay. I don't know. He was a bully. He was mean. Uh, I'm, I just wanted Maybe to clarify he was bald that and you said. just called him Baldy because he was mean. That's, and like, I mean, don't like you. I just wanted to make sure I heard you yes. right. Bald. Bald. <laughs> bald. I was just about to say that. <laughs> he was a farmer, and in some accounts, um, that I read. He was also a tax collector for the county and uh, was known to take pleasure in people's pain. He would push people who were down on their luck and couldn't pay their taxes. He often got into fights in the local saloons and was just as mean at home with his wife and children as he was to everyone else. Boo. He was 66 in June of 1886 when he was embroiled in a lawsuit, assumed to be because um, of how he treated people, basically. On his way home from court, he decided to stop in at the saloon to have a few drinks. As he usually did, he drank a bit too much and ended up in a fight and had to be kicked out and told to head home. He made his way along the tracks and wasn't seen alive again. When he didn't come home that night, his wife assumed he had stopped off and stayed with family that lived nearby. But as days passed, she eventually reported him missing and they found his body near the tracks, having been hit by not one or two trains, but many. It was thought that he may have been dead long before the first train hit him, but nobody was ever charged. Oh, T. Frankly, many in town were not too thrilled to do anything about the accident anyway. Because he was just so mean. He was buried in the Moonville Cemetery. And from that day on, many children were warned to stay away from the tracks, especially after dark, to keep away from Baldy Keaton. His spirit was often reported to be seen drunkenly shuffling along the tracks. And he has also been spotted standing above the tunnel. And many people have claimed to be hit by pebbles coming from that <gasps> spot. 
being thrown by Baldy. What a little rat. He is Even rat. in death, he's just mean. He doesn't like visitors to his tunnel. He calls it his tunnel. And even told a few investigators using a spirit box inside the Moonville tunnel, like, get out. I don't, I don't like visitors at my tunnel. Ew. Beyond the deaths of the townspeople walking along the railroad, there were several tragedies occurring to these, uh, to those aboard the passing trains. I read of two different derailments in the Moonville area, mm. resulting in several deaths and four or five reported deaths of brakemen on passing trains. Uh, at least. And that's just like reported in what I could find. You know what I think about when I think of trains and like brakes or whatever you're saying? A series of unfortunate events. Mm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And they like... The bobblehead thing and the... Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, maybe that's where my fear began. I was began. about to say, is that why you're afraid of trains? Because like he was trying to like off them and then they like stopped the train or like moved the whatever. Yeah. Maybe. Jim Carrey. That just stuck with me. Well, but anyway, back to Moonville. Being a brakeman in these times was the single most dangerous job in the U.S. And to be a brakeman, you had to walk on top of the train cars, leaping from car to car and manually push the brakes in on each one. So, like there was this like basically a pathway on top of each train car mm -hmm. and you'd have to go in and there was like this long pole to like press down and push the brakes in i am sure there is a better way to do that well there is now <laughs> i'm sure there they could have found a better way well they didn't for a while and oftentimes what? men would fall between the cars and get trapped really losing fingers and limbs <gasps> or falling completely through and being run over by the train oh my gosh they would have to remain on uh, on the tops of the trains year round. So when there was snow and freezing rain coming down, their only choice was to bundle up and push through. Because I mean, the trains kind of stop, I guess. I guess. Many were encouraged to warm up with whiskey in the winter months. And oh. uh, you can imagine that only worsened things for them. Doesn't that actually like, doesn't it make you more like the cold affects you more even though you feel warm? I, I heard I know something it, like that. I know it messes with your body temperature. I heard something like that. Like people think like, oh, it like warms you up, but really like if you're cold, you're gonna you're not gonna realize your body is actually getting so cold. Cause yeah, maybe. So I heard something like that. I'm I could sure. just be making it up, but no, that sounds familiar to me too. I I just can't place it. I I don't know the exact like the specifics. Yeah, but yeah, I've heard that too. But anyway, but they, bad idea. They did, and yeah, it was. <laughs> it truly was. Along with these brakemen, there's a story of a conductor who lost his life in Moonville, and though none of it is absolutely confirmed. The story and subsequent haunting is pretty compelling. The conductor and engineer of a freight train traveling along the Moonville tracks had known and worked with each other for over a year at this point. The conductor had begun to have an affair with the engineer's wife, and when the engineer found out, he was enraged. As they were passing through the desolate tracks in Moonville, because remember, it was the most, like, forced, isolated, yeah, mm -hmm. they made a quick stop. And before they started up again, the engineer said he was worried about the brakes on one of the cars near the engine. He said it seemed to have lagged a little and needed the conductor to jump down and take a peek underneath and make sure everything was in working order. As the conductor crawled underneath the wheels of the train, the engineer kicked the throttle, causing the train to jolt forward just a bit, <gasps> killing the conductor instantly. Oh my god. Claiming it was an accident, nothing was ever brought against the engineer, but his wife knew there was something more to the story that it just brought home to her. Yeah, because she's guilty. Mm-hmm. Now, when people are walking through the tunnel, sometimes the conductor can be seen um, at the edge and, and has even been captured in a photo. <gasps> a woman named Michelle Schrader was on a camping trip near Moonville, Ohio, with two of her friends when they hiked up to the tunnel and explored. She took many photos with her digital camera and hadn't noticed anything strange while there. When she got home, however, she downloaded all of the images to her computer and noticed that in one of the photos looking toward the entrance of the tunnel, there was a man standing there, like a dark shadow of man just standing there. Spooky. And we'll put the uh, we'll put the image up. Yes, I was just about to say, where is the picture? Wow, that's actually really scary. You can like clearly see like he's like kind legs. of see through, and there's like legs, and there's like a hat. Yeah, yeah, it looks like the silhouette of a person. It doesn't look like there's a a blob or a, a an orb of light. Like yes, that looks you, like a person. A lot of pictures you'll see that are like oh that could be anything. You yeah, know? but, but no, that, that was clearly that's a person. A person. Yeah. I have a story. I don't know if if we've put it on the pod before because I know what we've talked about it, mm -hmm. but um just how happens to be a train conductor story we were driving down a road in the town like next to where we grew up and that we were driving al along the train tracks on the road and like right where you can turn in like cross train tracks i saw a man standing in the middle and he was wearing like what i now recognize as like an old conductor like pinstripey like full outfit with like the cap on mm -hmm. he looked really old and he just kind of like watched like we kind of like looked and like it watched and I was like, just looking and I was just kind of like, oh, okay, it was a man. And then years later, I was like, wait a minute. There's nobody in town like that. Yeah. Nobody dresses like that. That, 
wait a minute like it just it hit me like one random day i think i was driving through there because i was thinking about it and i was like probably wasn't like a real like person i really need to do research on the area and see if there were any accidents with a conductor or anything i know but also, like when you said he was looking i thought you were saying he was pointing at you oh my god I was like, that is so no. scary oh, no no <laughs> he was just looking i was looking and he just like followed the car with his like was looking his just face. casually yeah no if he pointed I was oh, like, I you didn't tell chills. me that. That's no. scary. No, no, no. Because that would have scared me. But like, it was just kind of like, oh. And I didn't think about it until years later. And then I was like, that was probably like a little spirit. Yeah. I bet there's something that happened. If there was, and you like actually find the man, I'm. Oh my gosh. I'm going to have to be I done. I find his picture and you like, it's him. I'm going to have to be done. There's no, I can't. I hope I do. I can't get a confirmed story like that. I can't. Spooky. Very spooky. Or not. However you take it. I wasn't scared. I didn't get like a scary vibe. There was only one set of tracks through Moonville and these were traversed going both directions through the dense woods and dark tunnels. There were at least two train collisions in Moonville before they had a signal light put in, resulting in the loss of several lives. One in 1874 and one in 1880. One of these accidents, the, the one that occurred in 1880, is said to have brought on one of the most notorious hauntings in Moonville and the one we talked about at the beginning. It was a night in November of 1880 when Theodore, or some sources say his name was Frank, I... <laughs> don't know the newspaper that i read said theodore so i'm not 100 percent sure i like theodore i think I it's do a too. cute name but his last name is lawhead so that's what we'll call him lawhead he was uh traveling through southern ohio a route he had taken many times the lines did not have the electronic sensors in light at this time so engineers relied on dispatchers over the radio for information on the tracks uh being clear whether they're clear or not on this night a grave error was made and the dispatcher failed to notify lawhead of an eastbound train heading in their direction in time for either to stop just outside of the moonville tunnel the two trains collided with each other in a cacophony of metal scraping against metal Lawhead and his fireman, Charles Crick, lost their lives in the crash, and many others were severely injured. Ugh. Ghost sightings began almost immediately after the wreckage was cleared and continue to this day. The workers aboard the trains uh, that traversed this line often feared the stretch through Moonville because of the flickering lantern light <gasps> that they would see as they passed through the tunnel, vanishing as they came upon it. Oh, is he like trying to warn them or something? Yeah. Oh, that's kind of sad. Like, it's if, spooky, if I were but to like. Be traveling and seeing that light, yeah. Yeah, it would freak me out, but like, well, okay, Aww. he he does it a lot. There's no train coming. They have the like, like they have their own signal now. Yeah, but like maybe he's stuck in that like that a loop. loop or something of maybe. like, oh, the train's coming, the train's coming. Yeah. Oh. In January of 1895, the Chillicothe Gazette printed a story of, about just this, saying, in part, the ghost of Moonville is again at its old pranks, haunting B and O Southwest freight line, freight trains and their crews. Monday night, the ghost appeared. It showed up in front of the fast freight number 99 westbound. The ghost was attired in a pure white robe and carried a lantern. It had a flowing white beard. Its eyes glistened like balls of fire. Surrounding it was a halo of twinkling stars. As the train approached, the lantern was swung across the track. Engineer Washburn gave the proper whistle signal and stopped the train. As he did so, his ghost ship stepped off the track and disappeared amidst the rocks nearby. This is not the first time the same ghost had, spot had been spotted and delayed trains. It has been at this business off and on since the frightful collision at that point in which Engineer Law had lost his life. Oh, this was in a newspaper? This was in the newspaper, yeah. Wow. In 1895. Why isn't the news doing this now? <laughs> I don't know. Why are we talking about real world stuff? I'm tired of hearing about this the stuff. World. I want to hear this. <laughs> I want to hear about in the a different news. realm. Yes. I also do. It's more I'll, interesting. I'll in, start um I'll start looking for it and sending it your way every time I find one. In the news? Yeah. Okay. There was another story that I came across of a young engineer in the 1970s taking his first trip through Moonville. As they approached the location where the apparition usually appears, he saw the light flashing and began to stop the train with the conductor, a veteran on this line, placed a hand on his shoulder to stop him and say, don't bother. It's a ghost, not a person. As they approached the light, the train drove right on through with not a person or a light in sight. Weird. Very weird. If I was that guy, I'd be like, are you crazy? Like, right? I would, I'd be like, like, stop like, the train. Oh, no, there's a person. There's a light. He's like, no, no, no. Don't worry about it. Keep on. I would think that he was a murderous freak. I know. And like, then, what do you mean? A minute later, they just right through. No one Wow. There stressful in 1981 when the railroad finally added a signal light all conductors and engineers were instructed to only obey the signal and not any swinging lanterns or lights in the middle of the tracks as they come what? across now that that's like confirmed that's yeah. really crazy they were like hey we're put up a light only this light nothing else wow so he's really, really out there he's out there people today who walk along the old rail trail still see the light like those uh, we heard about in the opening story 
along with many other ghostly events inside the tunnel. I want to go. Same. I, I don't even care. I want to go. It's on the list. People claim to see spirits in and around the tunnel, hear the sounds of distant train whistles, my nightmare, <laughs> and the sounds of grinding metal running along the tracks, and some even claim to have felt touch on their <gasps> shoulders as they walk through. Never mind. As long as they don't touch me. Yeah, I don't want to go. Just walk in like, do not. I just want to see the, the lantern the and lantern. then we can go. You see it and we just run yes. home. Yes. <laughs> All, All the way. The way. <laughs> thousands of miles actually i, I don't know how far i, I, I don't know where ohio is to be honest <laughs> i think you need to learn geography i could probably <laughs> figure it out if i looked at the map but by the 1880s the town of moonville and surrounding area began to decline the line was purchased by a new railroad company in 1887 and by 1900 the mines began to close one by one all of the goods used up and carted away families were leaving their homes little by little in search of greater opportunity and by the 1940s the last family to live in moonville um had moved away Aww. by the 1960s most of the buildings and homes had been torn down and only some of the foundations and the cemetery remain today of course the railroad began to get less and less use and in 1988 the line was officially closed and all the tracks and bridges taken out what the trail and the old town of moonville and its tunnel sat abandoned for years with the only access being to hike the trail where the tracks used to sit and to cross raccoon creek by foot because the bridge was completely taken down. That's sad. I hate... That's another thing. Like, whenever towns get abandoned, it's like, no. All this history. Yeah. Sad. Families grown up here. I know. Eventually, a bridge was built back up over the old trestles, and the area is more accessible today. There are events hosted near the tunnel, like Midnight at Moonville, held, held every October, where they have uh, wagon rides, food and craft vendors, live music, storytelling, and more. Oh, when yeah. When you said we need to go, I was like yes oh yeah oh my gosh that's my scene at the end of the night after the sun has set and the uh, midnight hour approaches a smaller group will do a ghost hunt through the tunnel <gasps> and along the trails many people have recorded activity on these late night investigations and have had their equipment batteries run out much quicker than usual you know the typical haunting thing mm -hmm. they've gotten evp sessions of spirits talking about the trains and even mean spirits coming through probably Ooh. old baldy Ugh. um saying that they don't like, like them there. Get out. <laughs> yes. Get off my land type. Would that keep you from visiting the Moonville Tunnel? No. No? I, I don't know why, but I want to go because all the other things we've talked about that you can visit, you're like, oh yeah, I'd want to go. And I'm like, mm, But no. this calls to you? I would go to this one and then I would go to the Queen Mary during the day. I would definitely go to the Queen Mary. Just because I like to like do little, like, I like museums. I like history things. So like. I like tours. Yeah. I love going on this little tours. This one's a little bit of a hike. I'd be down. But, I mean, it's not bad. I mean, families make it up there and stuff, so it's not too bad. What's the bug situation in Ohio? What do they have going on over there? Do they have know. mosquitoes? Maybe. I don't know. Mm. Mosquitoes. It's in October, so you me. could wear like full leggings and like some like hiking boots. I'm, yeah. I'd be down. I'm so down. Okay. Add it to our list. We're going to Dude, Ohio. I'm so down. If y'all live in Ohio, Ohio. <laughs> if y'all live in Ohio, you might catch us there. Okay. I have a bonus story. And it's really quick, but. I found it uh, while I was going through my research, and I was like, okay, I have to put it in here. Okay. It's the Devil's Tea Table. Oh. I, I had to do it because it was tea, and I was just like, ugh. Cute. So it's it's kind of near Moonville, just a little way down uh, the track. It's a strange rock formation tucked into the woods on private property, so don't go up to it if you're <laughs> ever around. But it can see, be seen pretty well, like in autumn, when the leaves are kind of falling off from the trees, from King's Hollow Road. But don't go there on Halloween. It's once said that at midnight on Halloween, the devil dances on top. What? And if you see him and he looks you in the eyes, he'll steal your soul. I'm sorry. What? Isn't that scary? That's horrifying. What? What are they doing in Ohio? <laughs> I don't know, man. And it's like in Appalachia area. Too, oh, so. I thought the devil was in Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? And we really appreciate you taking the time to be here with us. Hey, that's a good song. It I'm not really a country good. girl, but that's a good song. No, it really is. I, I really enjoy that song. <laughs> it's just funny. Oh my God. <laughs> you can cut that. Nope. <laughs> nope. Sorry, man. <laughs> but we really do appreciate you taking the time to be here with us today. Don't forget to rate and review if you're on podcast. Uh, subscribe, like, comment if you're on YouTube. Let us know if you've ever been to the Moonville Tunnel. We'd love to hear your stories. Or really anything in Ohio, because now I'm really interested in Ohio. <laughs> yeah, I suddenly really want to go. Or if you've ever seen the uh, Devil Down in Georgia. We'd like to know that, too. <laughs> okay <laughs> follow done. us on instagram remember we've got our giveaway happening so go ahead follow us on instagram 
like the post, comment, tag a friend. Um, and if you want an extra entry, you can share it on your story and tag us too. You got to tag us so that we can see it. But if you have a creepy story or a supernatural encounter that you'd like to share with us, literally anything, you can email us at ghostiespod at gmail.com. We'd love to hear it. Maybe read it on a future listener stories episode. But other than that, we're so excited to be going on this adventure with you guys. And we'll see you next Monday. Goodbye.